Hey y'all, Coach and Fight here, coming out of the Third Testament of the Bible, chapter 17, which is the new way of worshiping God. We're going to look at section one here, the evolution of worship services. We're going to talk a little bit on uh, this this era that we live in and how his messages have been carried over into this area. We're going to talk a little bit about sacrifices, and we're going to talk a little bit on idolatry. We're going to talk about some of the benefits of prayer and knowing how to pray. We're going to look at, you know, why some some people, you know, don't pray and why they, you know, turn to other means to please the father. But we're also going to learn what will break them of that habit. Sit back for a moment and let's increase our knowledge of prayer. Verse one, how slowly mankind walks towards perfection in their worship of God. Talking about the spiritual walk, spiritual evolution, he ca he calls it in other places, it, um, the Christian walk, uh, people will call it. Um, verse 2 says, every time I come to you with a new lesson, it seems to you to advance for your evolution. See, now, you got to remember, when, when they were issued the law there on the Mount Sinai, it would have been tough for them, you know, because they hadn't heard of such things. Same way when the Messiah came. Those rules and stuff that they got back then, they've had to learn it. And, you know, some of us are still trying to learn the rules of the second era. Still talking about uh, that, what you find in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and such. And here we are ready for the third. I understand that I give you an entire era to come to understand it and to integrate it into your lives. Okay. The whole era as we have this is the this we're about to go into the next era. We had an era with Moses. We had an era with. Uh, the Messiah and we have an era now that's about this with Elijah that's about to start now if you know your seven seals uh, you know what I'm talking about this is the third time that he's brought the word you know welcome to the third era welcome to the third era this is the third time that we've been given a uh, bundle of documents that is telling us what we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to do it. Now, the other texts, I, uh, you know, I'd argue that the majority of the other texts that you read about and hear about are only telling you the stories of how this stuff played out after these people were given the commands. They were told what to do up front. And then you see book after book after book of, you know, people in different people's lives where it actually played out, except the prophets. Now, they were on a different level. But let's go on. Verse 3 says, The victims that you offered upon the altar of Jehovah were received by him, but it was not the most adequate form to elevate your spirit to the Father. It was then when I came to you as Jesus to teach you the divine commandment which says to you, Love one another. All right, so he's talking about sacrifices here, saying that sacrifices worked. They still do. They will forever work. You know, sacrifice, that ain't no joke. You know what I'm saying? You do uh, um, a blood sacrifice, it actually means something in the spirit world. And, you know, and then he's he's saying that when he came as, as, as Jesus. Now, one thing you should note, one thing I want you to note is how he doesn't take anything away from it. Even though he mentions it several times and he doesn't add anything to it, you know, don't get me wrong, he doesn't add anything to it, but he doesn't take anything from it. Talking about sacrifices. Then he comes down here and says, love one another. That was an additional commandment. See, it wasn't a rule to love one another back there with, 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 with those, um, with those uh, uh, judges and the prophecies in that, in that time period. You know what I'm saying? Somebody hit you with a rock, you know what I'm saying? They're supposed to get hit back. Let's go to verse 4. He says, I say to you today that the lessons I taught you during the second era through the deeds of Jesus have been altered at times and misrepresented on others. Yeah, so the things that the Messiah uh, taught, you know, aren't what aren't what you know we do. You know, there's a um, video out there I watched once where this gentleman was explaining that the Messiah was um, uh, barefoot and homeless, and you know, but that's not what's being taught in our churches. For that purpose, I have come as announced. Okay, now remember, we've been waiting for the second coming, him coming. This is the Father coming. This is, you know, it's all, it's all, you know, it's all about him and the Word. You know, he is the Word. You read John chapter 1, verse 1. But it's, he's coming, he's coming. He, that's the purpose. He's saying that's the purpose of. But I'm mean, just read it. He says, for that purpose, I have come as I announced. So that was the purpose of it. 
to clarify my truth. Now, remember that we 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 um, know to him to come in spirit and truth. You know, so he's going to come to clarify his truth. It's already been you know true the whole time. It's just been a hand. It's just been in the hands of man and such. And some of that stuff got to be straightened out. Ver, just keep going. He says, my sacrifice in that period prevented the sacrifice of many victims, and I taught you a more perfect worship. I heard this once and only once, and that's that. Um, that what was going on back there in Jerusalem, them that cross that they put those th three individuals on, uh, Yehoshua Hamashiach, and the two thieves, though that was what they were doing to a lot of Jews. They were executing them. They were executing a lot of them, like like the Holocaust, like you know Hitler was doing. That's what you know that was going on, and give, leaving me with the impression that you know you would have been seeing hundreds or you know of thousands of these crosses lined up beside the road, and that's I believe is what he's talking about here when he says that my sacrifice in that period prevented the sacrifice of many victims because that's that's exactly what that that uh, movie or individual was talking about. It was a long time ago, but. That's what they were talking about when they were saying that, you know, he put on when he was put on the cross and on the cross that stopped. He stopped it. A lot of, you know, that ended that, you know, they stopped that practice at that point. Now let's go to verse five. He says, my new manifestation of this period will allow mankind to understand that the symbolic forms should not be adopted without first analyzing their significance. All right. Now, talking about idols, talking about images. Um, or, or you know, figure out which ones are important or not. If you use to find the Ark of the Covenant, you know what I'm saying, this world will become idolatrous really quick. Um, let's go on. But he's just saying to, to, to imagine the stuff that you're looking at. He says, since they are only representations of my lessons. They're only representations. So you take the representation for what it is, but leave it at that, a representation. You know, don't don't be, you know, venerating anything created by man. Nothing except, you know, children or whatever, if you, you want to look at it that way. See, what he's talking about is idols and images and different things that we put in a place of you know our father it may be a picture on your wall it may be you know something down at the church it may be you know anything you know when we're adding what did that word up there say w worship did it say something like veneration or you know something like that um when we we are doing that to anything material and i don't care what it is you know if if if, if we got any type of praise for you know whatsoever above the father you know not only is it you know i'm in my opinion not right against scripture or whatever but you know from what i read in the scripture in the scripture it is going to harm you in the end it's actually going to be used uh, for your own destruction he, he said he's, well he said it will be used against you um, let's go to verse 6 he says prayer is the spiritual medium that I have inspired in man so that he may communicate with my divinity that is why it manifests in you as a yearning a necessity of the spirit as a refuge in the times of trial we look inwardly and we see if this is in fact true. And this is how we know that the Bible is true when we see that, you know, this 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 is actually happening. You know, does this really go on? You know, um, I have to meditate on that. Let's go on. Who does not know true prayer does not understand the joys contained in it and does not know the source of health and goodness to be found in it. They feel the impulse to speak to me and present their petitions but lacking spirituality, they feel that the offering of sending up only their thoughts is so meager that they instantly look for something material to offer me, thinking that with that they will flatter me more. So this is he's, this is how people get get into idolatry is when they find prayer insignificant. You know, they want to do more than pray. I was talking to an individual up the street not too long ago. And, you know, he was he he was um, looking over at our church and he was talking about uh, the condition of the church and, you know, the leadership of the church and the ministry. And, you know, we were just having a conversation about the church. One of the things that he pointed out was that the church didn't even have any idols over there. It didn't have any any uh, any images. It didn't have any pictures. And so he, he saw that as a sign that the church wasn't. A Christian church, you know, he said it didn't even have a picture of Jesus in it. I said a lot of people don't pray. The thought that came to mind when when I was visiting with my dad, there was a young man that I was talking to and he 
was talking about um, a certain issue that was going on in his life. And I asked him, did he pray about it? And, you know, did he did, I think I might have asked him, did he know how to pray? Because I had just did a class on, you know, um, that class. Um, I'll flash it up for you guys. I can't remember the name of it right now. But he was so he was so he was so confident in his answer. Yeah, man, I know how to pray. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. That it made it made me want to challenge him. Like, really, <laughs> really? How do you pray? Wow, maybe I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got that much confidence, and I just did a class on it. And he said, you know, the regular way. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray my Lord the soul to keep. You know, you know the regular. And I said, yeah. So you ask yourself. This grown man, he had a little girl. I guess he said that prayer with his little girl. You know, that's you know his daughter. That's so. That's where that would have came from. Now I understand that part. Now I understand why that was the prayer because he said it with his daughter. She was about uh, a year and a half old. She wasn't talking. But what about other individuals? You know what I'm saying? That don't pray at all. They said that they do not understand the joys contained in it. I mean, the joy is that, you know, you have somebody you can ask for stuff. You know, how many people have somebody they can call on to ask for stuff or ask for somebody to take care of you or look out for you? Hey, I'm about to go up the road tomorrow. Watch that. Watch my back, you know, on this chair. How many people in the world can can do that? You know what I'm saying? If you are a child, you got your parents. You can do that, too. You know what I'm saying? At least if you live living in a house, you can. But, you know what I'm saying, who else? You know, once once they break your plate or whatever, you, you who else got somebody to call on like that? You know, so joys. Yeah, what, what more joys in it than, you know, spending time with the father, you know. Anyway. And does not know the source of health and goodness to be found in it. Yeah, because prayer has healing. You can heal. You can heal other people easy. It's easy to heal other people. Now, hey, you know, but, you know, you do have a certain health about yourself, too, you know, because, you know, you you have a requirement. You have, I ain't going to say a requirement, but we have a, an assignment, you know, whether you do it or not. You have an assignment to um, um, uh, teach people to pray. I mean, that's why we did that class, you know, but that we were talking about. So you teach people to pray. And so, you know, you get people praying for you and then you can be healthy, too. You know, what I mean? in the meantime, you know. And you just pray for them. It is in this fashion that humanity has fallen into idolatry. Fanaticism, rites, and external worship drowning their spirits and depriving themselves of the blessed liberty of praying directly to the Father. Yeah, so, you know, even 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 the chosen elect, even the ones that, you know, are his, you know, best, the best of the best, you know what I'm saying, guys out there. If they don't pray right, they, they off too. If they go without praying one single day, they're going to they gonna make more mistakes, you know, than, than it's going to be possible. It's like it's like no respect to persons. It, it don't even matter. You know what I'm saying? So imagine a person that, you know, is not even trying or in this case, he's saying that they're, they're idolatrous. That means that they they um, are worshiping uh, idols and that include images that include graven images and some of the stuff will be okay the number one thing people worship here in America is money money notice how it has a a a um a face on it and that dollar bill people call them dead presidents there's a reason why they put that picture in there what did that do say if you let me control the money i care not who who is your president or whatever because he has the control he has control over over matters on a spiritual nature this dude you know he passed governments if he can put that picture out there and put that you know that image for the people to because they're going to worship him and they're going to give him money and then he's going to be able to take that money and buy and sell people just like revelation says you know what i'm saying but let's go on fanaticism and rights fanaticism as church that's that's church people believe that they church is the only church um there's you know right you know and and then rights that's um religious acts that's things that they'll do you know what i'm saying like, um, I guess you would think about sacrifices, you know, if, if the person is not doing it right or whatever, that's, that could be one of the easy things that, you know, could turn into, you know, that what he's talking about here. 
and external worship talking about you know prayer where people you have people like in a group that you know will be like bowing down i think of them the muslim that's out that's external worship when he wants to worship i mean you be i remember i remember and i was thinking about this earlier and you know i'm listening to that inner voice but you know i went to this job interview one time and somehow the subject came up that i was a levi and we got and it, it, it jumped from being a Levi and who a Levi is and their responsibilities to the fact that I was some type of religious guy. And, you know, here it was, you know, they they kind of they kind of, you know, mess with me a little bit. It's about three of them, you know, and, you know, they took me to lunch or whatever. But, you know, so they got the, they got their way with me. They walked me around the plant. They got they got to pick on me a little bit. And, um. We we was at the we was at the at the at the table. All the food arrived and everybody was ready. And I started eating. I mean, these people. They, now, they, I, when I say they had been picked on, picking on me, I'm trying to be polite and you know not you know remember injuries and all that. But I mean, these people were seriously picking on me. You know, man, to the point where you know what I'm saying you know I almost you know lost my my um my my virgins right there. But I started eating. I just started eating the food, and it was like, oh, wait, whoa, 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 you're supposed to be at what a, what a prayer at, and I was like, I said it, I already said my prayers, and, and they, 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 they didn't take that one well, I wish I'd had a, I wish, I ain't gonna say I wish I had a, you know, camera, but that's one of those photographic moments when you say that, because you had three people, and they had three different looks, the, the one guy, his eyes were wide open, because he, he was demonstrating how you would actually pray with your eyes open, and so, you know, he put on that little show. But the, the, one of the young ladies, her mouth was open. And, you know, you know, the other one's ears was open. They were listening. So you had, you know, what was it, three, three, uh, what they what they call them. It's hear no evil, say no evil, and, you know. Only when the pain is very intense, when the pain is at the limits of their human strength, do the spirit, forgetting ceremony and knocking over idols, Frees himself and arises to cry from deep within, my father, my God. Okay, so these are people who, you know, are in a little bit of trouble right here. What do you say? When the pain is at its, when the pain is at the limits of their human strength. You know what I'm saying? So what is that? You know what I'm saying? We're, we're talking, you know, at, at the point of death. From what I understand in this third testament, death hurts. It, it hurts you know, not not necessarily something you would actually see when that person closes their eyes, because the, it seems like the pain starts when the person actually closes their eyes. Like, you know, what I'm saying you your body is asleep, your body is dead. And all of a sudden your spirit has to become a, detached from it. And it's like ripping something off is, you know, the way I understand it. It don't sound pleasant at all. You know, but I am adding a lot to that. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Let's go on but notice right here where he said it, they don't worry about their their idols anymore it is at that point they don't worry about their idol this person be going down to the to the and i will pick on somebody else now and the person's been going out here to this catholic church with this dude walking up and down this aisle kissing on his thing or whatever and you know what i'm saying people running across the aisle to you know and never mind What's going to end up happening is they're going to find themselves in pain. You, you, you could watch a movie or something where, and I, and I don't suggest you do so because I don't. You can, you can see where people, you know, have, you can see where people would have a car on them or, you know what I'm saying, the, uh, something is about to explode or, or even yourself, you know what I'm saying. You can see in times when you, you, you um, were in a lot of pain for one reason and another, and that is when you didn't, you didn't bother to run down to the church. You didn't say all of a sudden I need to uh, call up, you know, the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug and get a prayer in. You know what I'm saying? You you didn't you didn't go grab your your money and grab your wallet and see how much cash you had in there and see if you, you know, was going to figure out the problem because you knew that wasn't going to help you. What you did was you dropped, you know, you, you whatever you did, you know what I'm saying? You you did it inwardly. You you did it to yourself. You did it to that inner self. You did it to him which dwells in our conscience. You you was you you wasn't, you know what I'm saying? And that's when when, you know what I'm saying? That's when you a lot of people for a lot of people. That's when they realize that the father is real. That's when it, you know, snapped for them. That's when life changed for them and things, you know, became different. All right. Let's go on. Do you see people occupy making war on one another in this materialistic time? 
Yet I tell you, even in the middle of these wars, many men have found the secret of prayer, that which is born of the heart and comes to me as an urgent call, a protest as a plea. The prayer is it's technical, but it's not complicated. You know what I'm saying? There's a certain way you have to do it. But, you know, you can, you can, you can spit out a prayer in a second. You know what I'm saying? Prayer, you can have prayer. You can be slinging out prayers, prayers like bullets, like arrows in a, in a, in a, and you got a, 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 you know what I'm saying? An infinite number of, you know, arrows, you know what I'm saying? Where you just pulling them out, shooting them and, you know, it's prayers or whatever. Um, but let's go on. Verse 10 says. When they see the requested miracle happen, they know that no other way exists of speaking to God than with the language of the spirit. Yeah, and then you can't tell them nothing. And then guess what happens next? Then they become real hard headed and you really can't tell them nothing. They're like, oh, no, God, that's God in me. You can't tell. I know. I'm right. And it's like, I know I'm righteous. I know I'm holy. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, um, have you read anything? I ain't got to. It's in me already. It's already in me. And OK. You know what I'm saying? Do you know any of the laws or rules or statutes or judgments or precepts? You know anything? Do you know any? I don't need to. I I don't, I don't need to. It's in me. And you know, thing is, as confident as he is that the Holy Spirit dwells in him, if he never goes and studies anything, then he's not going to feed that spirit. He's not going to grow, and he's not going to evolve spiritually. And um. Then he's, he's going to find himself behind, maybe even count it worse or even count it as a rebel, the one who knows the Lord and, and never bothered to, to learn about him. Well, <clears throat> all right, that's going to do it for this section of uh, chapter 17. You can see what's all what all we have to uh, what all parts make up chapter 17. We've already covered uh, section three and chapter four out of this book. So um, you can find classes over there. Matter of fact, I'll put them up as the end screens over here and we'll come back and I believe we'll do part two next prayer by rote empty of devotion and faith so you guys go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that bell button so you can catch those classes as they come out and leave a comment and hit the like button if you got something out of it pray for us